In the final session of day one, we'll get to know the business opportunities for Agri PV in India by Tobias Winter, Director, Indo-German Energy Forum, SO. Welcome, Mr. Winter. Namaskar, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction and uh, thank you to uh, ET Energy World for giving us the opportunity to speak about business opportunities and best practices for agrivoltaics uh, in India. My name is Tobias Winter. I'm heading the support office to the Indo-German Energy Forum on behalf of government of Germany and government of India. And uh, I'd suggest to dig right into the topic. Uh, what are we talking about today? This is agrivoltaics means agriculture in between interspace or below uh, solar. Um, here a plant, one megawatt plant set up in uh, Gujarat by GICL uh, in uh, Bastan. Uh, you might have heard about promising research, tomato yield twice as high, pepper yield three times higher in combination with agrivoltaics. What is it all about? We can choose agriculture or we can choose solar or we can combine both and maybe compromise uh, on the solar side but still have uh, maybe less but even maybe more uh, yield no here a, a scientific research outcome from uh, set up by Fraunhofer ESA in Germany could be also wheat uh, with higher losses but uh, this is in Germany uh, in India we are actually uh, thankful for the <laughs> less sun in terms of uh, radiation for plants. So uh, the yield is expected to be even higher in India. This is actually not too new. Uh, more than 10 years ago, a two megawatt plant, for example, here in Italy had been set up by Rentec. Um, there is a more sophisticated installation here, I think, with the apple trees by Sun R in France. There's also simpler and smaller installations a lot uh, uh, in Japan here combined with rice cultivation. Um, check pattern, you can see here that the shadow is actually uh, walking over the plants throughout the day so that the sunlight distribution is uh, quite equally. Um, here another setup uh, of a simpler uh, plant in uh, Japan, but now big companies are actually stepping in um, you uh, may recognize uh, some brand names here. Actually, Huawei in China already with uh, 700 megawatt peak agri photovoltaic plants uh, growing um, mainly oil seeds um, underneath. Um, this is a plant in the Netherlands uh, by Bivari with berry, uh, raspberry growing. They're actually using uh, transparent uh, glass glass, bifacial solar panels. Um, to increase um, uh, the, the, the amount of light uh, hitting the plant. But there's also simple monofacial setups here, an agricultural plant um, in Germany by Ökohaus GmbH. And um, this has become so popular actually that now an own DIN pre-norm has been developed. The DIN spec 91434, it's a downloadable for those getting the presentation, uh, I'll suggest to uh, just download the file and you see that there is certain criteria being defined for what actually is agri -photovoltaics. Why? Well, at the end, we are talking about installation of uh, solar plants on agricultural land. And we do not want to convert the agricultural land into construction land. We want a construction permit, but we don't want it to become commercial land because all the subsidies associated with agriculture shall remain flowing to the farmer. And therefore, specific setups have been defined. Um, uh, primarily, most important is that the agricultural activity has to continue and that only 10 to 15%, depending on the setup of the land, is being actually taken away. You see, even vertical uh, PV is uh, considered under this norm. And this is really important also when we talk about subsidy programs uh, by the ministries, because uh, it really needs to be assured that there is uh, uh, no subsidy fraud ongoing. Also, there is bad experiences. But there's a lot of good experience also if certain criteria are being taken care of and here in this case defined uh, by this uh, German norm. How about India? Really promising, 
really promising. This is still not published uh, because it's under revision, but uh, really promising results by Fraunhofer Ise did a research study on the technical potential in India and only 1% of India's net zone area would, would be 140 million hectare and with the 450 kilowatt peak per hectare, that means 630 gigawatt peak photovoltaics. This is amazing and really promising, especially when we think about uh, land constraints also for future green hydrogen production. There's no land constraint if we really work together with the Ministry of Agriculture and get solar being installed on agricultural land without needing, needing to convert it into, into construction land. Another aspect, mind-blowing by Fraunhofer, uh, they did a calculation on how far we can actually get when we have one hectare of land for one year and put solar above and charge an electric car with it. And as you can see here, it's more than uh, two and a half million kilometers you can get from one hectare covered with agri-photovoltaics. The same hectare you do biofuels, you go 118,000 kilometers. So that's amazing, yeah? And the good thing about agri-photovoltaics is you could still produce biofuels underneath, maybe even more biofuels than without the solar panel and still produce biofuels. But why would you if you could use it to feed the nation? So incredible results. And this is not just theoretical results. I can assure you that first countries really study EV supercharging infrastructure combined with agri-photovoltaics close to highways uh, and farmlands. So this is uh, something where actually Indian delegations have visited, uh, for example, here Germany to see uh, what is state of the art in uh, research. But India itself, you might have heard of some examples already. Uh, Cochin Airport is one of the most famous uh, examples here in this area. Actually, agri-photovoltaics uh, and farming is actually already happening. So you see here uh, that pumpkin is being grown uh, on uh, the side of the, uh, on the higher side of the solar area, lower side, the water, cleaning water for, could fall down and maybe damage, damage the plant. So it's uh, uh, um, here on the, on the higher side. A beautiful setup. You see uh, uh, that this is uh, really practiced in, in larger scale. Then there's this uh, one megawatt uh, GIPCL plant uh, of Anand Krishi Agriculture University in Amral, Gujarat. It's a wonderful, beautiful setup with different uh, shading patterns here being tried out. Uh, drip irrigation, as you can see in this aerial photo. They're growing potato, they're growing uh, different crops uh, throughout the year um, uh, at different uh, solar panel heights. And it's really encouraging to see uh, uh, what's going on at present uh, uh, here. But yes, there's also a lot of lessons learned. For example, if the height is not sufficient and an escape from a tractor might hit the solar panel or at the end, uh, there's no farming below the solar, it's uh, just in between. But even just uh, in between is encouraging to see, right? So uh, here another uh, photo from the plant you have seen on the first slide um, in Bastan Gujarat by JPCL. Kazri, uh, you might have heard also of uh, Dr. Santra uh, publishing uh, frequently new research on the outcomes uh, of the setups at the Kazri in Jodhpur, Rajasthan. Uh, also encouraging results here with drip irrigation in between, even below monofacial plants are growing in, in the shade, yeah, uh, amazing. But to be honest, uh, if the farmer does not like to farm below solar panels because of the um, mounting structure, then this land also uh, would remain unused, as you can see in this photo. Newest plant, uh, which went online by Oak Ridge and uh, 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 Krishi Kendra, uh, uh, Ujwa here close to Delhi, 110 kilowatt plant. Um, there you don't have the issue that uh, you are taking away land below solar panel because they have used a, a V-shaped design, very promising uh, setup. 
uh, with uh, uh, rainwater being captured also uh, in the drainage system. Here, a 200 kilowatt uh, pilot at uh, Dialbach Agriculture University close to uh, Agra. Um, some of you might have heard about the research set up uh, by Amity University in uh, Noida uh, on the commercial side, uh, but still pilot phase, Jane irrigation, uh, very well known for its banana pilot or uh, here in the background uh, uh, today, mainly uh, experience with lemongrass and rice uh, are being uh, practiced. You see also they're using um, uh, semi-transparent uh, solar panel for this purpose. And this is really promising to see. It's a satellite photo that uh, uh, here you can see the agriculture research setups. There's another plant here on the top right, um, not visible in the photo, but also first solar greenhouses with uh, bifacial glass, glass solar panels uh, being constructed here in India. Really encouraging to see. Uh, this is a multi-billion dollar market coming up in India. Here a photo from inside, thanks to uh, Jane Irrigation who has uh, provided uh, uh, this, this material. Another research here, seven kilowatt uh, uh, peak uh, set up by uh, Junagad Agriculture University. Um, some of you may know Professor Chauhan here experimenting, very encouraging results uh, with capsicum, uh, and uh, tomato, first bifacial uh, uh, vertical set up here by NICE installed to see if we can actually also uh, uh, even use less land for solar and benefit from even higher uh, solar yields by using bifacial solar panels. Um, I think there's a lot of developers in India waiting for the research results to come out. Uh, this is here a setup in Germany where it's already uh, used as a so-called uh, solar fence or also in bigger setups. I think that's a two megawatt uh, uh, plant in Germany, Donau Esching by next to Sun, uh, where really professional uh, large scale farming is being practiced. Together with precision farming, uh, these uh, no tractors work with GPS, so uh, no uh, worries to hit any poles from the solar panels, fantastic to see. One issue in India would uh, be cleaning, certainly, which is not that much as an often issue when we talk about uh, uh, vertical uh, uh, bifacial solar agri-PV uh, because of uh, less, uh, less dust uh, being stick to the solar panels. But yes, cleaning is an issue. Uh, Kasri had come up with the idea and that was then also implemented by Oak Ridge to actually install a drainage uh, system to capture uh, the water in a water tank uh, for reusage of water. A wonderful idea. Um, but yes, the height no, of uh, some systems uh, above uh, three meters um, yeah, is a challenge, especially for cleaning. In this case, uh, manual tracking had been applied that may be not a solution uh, for large scale solar. They're actually very encouraging uh, to know that Mahindra Sustan had installed on, uh, on a partial uh, PV setup of around 400 kilowatt peak, um, single axis tracking and uh, is growing lemongrass there. Uh, very encouraging to see. If this is then combined with dry cleaning, like uh, by Copia who's having its plant already in Hyderabad, uh, India, manufacturing these devices, um, then we don't see any hurdle to have such kind of setups actually in a multi megawatt or even gigawatt scale. Single axis tracking, individual single axis tracking, single pole, so uh, no space taken away, and then non-rail based dry cleaning. So means these robots now, they just run in when the solar panel is absolutely in horizontal mode, clean the solar panel, and then go back to the charging station. Simple solution, no additional cost for any rail systems to be installed. Um, yeah, that could be a big business opportunity for India. This here itself is not an uh, uh, agri-PV plant. Same maybe because uh, the sheep is keeping the grass low. But yeah, we can imagine these kind of setups also at uh, two meters high, right? Or if it's too big for you, and with this, I 
I will almost end. Uh, uh, why not setting up a plant on your own roof? If you own a solar roof, there's encouraging videos on YouTube uh, from uh, Hinren who has installed uh, several such plants growing their own uh, herbs and uh, vegetables uh, on the roof also with the uh, solar drainage system here. So yeah, if you're interested in uh, more information on what does it mean to implement agri-photovoltaics, which plants are there, which experiences are there in India, I would highly recommend you to uh, download uh, this study uh, done by National Solar Energy Federation uh, of India. Uh, they have also published actually a Google Maps with all the plants uh, already being installed in India. Um, amazing to see uh, that the, this beautiful uh, work is actually having highest click rates we can, could ever imagine. And uh, yeah, very encouraging also to hear that actually Bloomberg New Energy Finance gave 10 predictions for 2022 uh, for solar. And uh, one of these 10 predictions uh, is that actually agri-photovoltaics will start to be properly understood for commercial purposes in 2022. And that is something not only in regard to Japan, Germany, France, US, this will become huge in India, huge. And we are lucky that uh, government support is there. Uh, Sri Kubaji, Honorable Minister of State, Chemicals and Fertilizers and New and Renewable Energy. Uh, he is well aware of the concept and uh, 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 made a statement lately that solar PV and agriculture together will transform the life of farmers and their livelihood. And uh, uh, we really do believe that this will become big. Any further questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with uh, Mr. Pulipaka, CEO from National Solar Energy Federation of India or with my colleague, uh, Ms. Dahl. She's in charge of uh, our uh, activities in agri-photovoltaics. And with this, I would like to end and uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, hope to see more of these kind of setups in India soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Winter, for the engaging and thoughtful presentation. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the day one of the ET Energy World Solar Power Congress 2022. Thank you to all the speakers for sharing valuable information and for sparing your precious time for this event. Definitely, we are taking learnings from this event. The solutions and the advice will help the businesses and the nation to grow. Thank you to the audience for being so interactive. Thank you to all the partners for joining us and for all the support in making this event happen in a successful way. Thank you to all of you. See you all tomorrow on day two with more interesting topics. Take care.